Well, hi. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael Platt and of the Platt Wellness Center, located <clears throat> in Palm Desert, California. Today we're going to be talking about thyroid, or actually an underactive thyroid, which is exceptionally common, especially amongst women. And I want to clear up some misconceptions uh, about thyroid. You know, first of all, what I'm going to talk about is, is the symptoms of an underactive thyroid. And then we'll talk about treatment and uh, other aspects related to it. The, um, the thyroid controls metabolism in every cell of the body, so obviously it's a very important hormone. And the, uh, the classic symptoms of an underactive thyroid uh, is dry skin, poor nails, hair loss, low body temperature, um, and the fact that it affects every, everything in the body, obviously there could be a lot of symptoms, but the, cla the classic symptom of an underactive thyroid <clears throat> are cracked heels. The skin over the heels is cracked, and that's a classic sign of an, of an underactive thyroid. Also, the, uh, the nails will chip or peel soft, um, and these are pretty good indications of an underactive thyroid. The, uh, in, now, <clears throat> in terms of laboratory testing, um, there are three major tests that should be done. Um, one, you know, the, the most commonly performed, uh, performed test is a TSH test, it stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, which is a hormone put up by the pituitary gland. And there's a lot of um, misconceptions about TSH. Um, but generally the way it's used, if the doctor is only going to do one thyroid test, this is the one he's going to do, and if it's within normal limits, then that's as far as he's going to be going. Problem is, there are basically two different types of an underactive thyroid. You know, now one is called primary hypothyroidism. This is where the thyroid gland itself <clears throat> does not produce enough thyroid. Uh, a classic type of primary hypothyroidism is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The uh, and usually uh, in this case, the TSH levels should be elevated. Now, there's another type of underactive thyroid that is not generally known, which is called secondary hypothyroidism, and this is where the pituitary doesn't put out enough TSH. So obviously in this case, the TSH level will be low, and when the TSH level is low, unfortunately, doctors will interpret this as the fact that you have enough thyroid or even too much thyroid. Um, and this is why when doing testing, you cannot just do a TSH level. The, um, now the other two tests that should always be done along with the TSH, one is called a free T4. Free means that it's not attached, um, but it's biologically active. And the other test is a free T3. Now T3 uh, does 90% of the work for thyroid. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> in other words, it's the thyroid hormone, and, and surprisingly, there are a lot of uh, doctors that don't even look at the T3 level. Um, the uh, the other now the T4, you know, after it's produced by the uh, thyroid gland, it goes to the liver and it converts into T3. So, so the three major tests that should be done when trying to evaluate the thyroid function. Is, is the TSH, the free T3, and a free T4. Now, there are other couple of other tests that you could be looking at. There's another test called a reverse T3. And when people are in a situation where they have a lot of adrenaline, um, adrenaline uh, is a stimulant, and so is thyroid. So people that have a lot of adrenaline do not tolerate thyroid, and when people have a lot of adrenaline, they often produce a extra cortisol to deal with the stress from the adrenaline. And cortisol is an anti-thyroid hormone. And what it does, it prevents T4 from converting into T3, and it causes T3 to convert into reverse T3, which has no function. So, <clears throat> so it's another thyroid test that you could look at is the reverse T3. And another test 
which is traditionally overlooked, is cholesterol. And uh, what most people don't realize is that the thyroid controls cholesterol metabolism. In fact, <clears throat> when I did my training, they used to call cholesterol the poor man's thyroid test. So characteristically, people that have a high cholesterol level, uh, very often it's because their thyroid function is on the low side. And just putting somebody on thyroid can dramatically lower cholesterol levels which is a much safer way of approaching elevated cholesterol than putting people on statin drugs, but that's for another lecture <laughs> anyway. Um, so again, um, just to summarize, the, the best testing to be done for thyroid is a TSH level, free T4, free T3, um, possibly reverse T3, and also a um, cholesterol level. So there's the basic test. Uh, that should be done for, for thyroid. The um, other thing about thyroid, um, what's available in terms of treatment, you have drugs um, uh, that are called T4, and the, the T4 drugs are Synthroid, Levoxyl, or the generic, which is um, the, um, it's called levothyroxine. So those are the three types of T, you know, of T4. Now there are a lot of people that also, or in addition, use uh, medication called Armor Thyroid or Nature Thyroid, and these are natural type um, thyroids um, that um, are a combination of T3 and T4, but primarily they're mostly T3. The um, the thing about um, Synthroid and Levoxyl is that they are synthetic, but they're very close to uh, to approaching the molecule of T4 and T3 that, <clears throat> that we produce on our own. Um, now, there is no such thing as a bioidentical thyroid. Um, you can get thyroid from a compounding pharmacy, but they're not bioidentical. They're, um, things like um, armor and nature thyroid are natural, but they're natural, uh, they're bioidentical actually for pigs because that's where they come from. And when people are on uh, armor or nature thyroid, they should be aware that the T3 in these medications only lasts for about three hours. So if somebody is on these medications, a better way of approaching it is to take half the dose in the morning and the second half about 2 p.m. This way they don't get a slump later on in the, in the afternoon. The, the, the main thing to think about, because you always have to worry about side effects with medication, uh, the number one side effect if somebody's on too much thyroid is that they'll get what palpitations, a rapid heartbeat. So if somebody's on thyroid and they're not having a heartbeat that's you know, higher than in the 70s, they're not getting too much thyroid. So, um, so when people are uh, being tested while they're on thyroid, and again, TSH is usually the, the number one test that's looked at, people should understand that there's no such thing as a normal TSH level. And I say that because the only reason, the only reason the pituitary ever releases thyroid-stimulated hormone is when it detects that there's not enough thyroid. So looking at it from that standpoint, you can understand when I say that there's no such thing as a normal, as a normal TSH level, that any time it's produced, the pituitary is saying you need thyroid. <clears throat> I thank you for listening, and if anybody has any questions, they can always either email my office or call my office. Um, the email is uh, questions at platwellness.com, and the office number is 760-836-3232. Um, it's been a pleasure, and it's to happy hormones. Take care.